because I'm horny to see cosplayers doing that. <laughs> what if, what if this is actually a thing happening? Yeah, everybody does dumb shit, you know? Uh, something very perverted that has to do with- Oh, he's gonna grab boobs, right? Aha, uh -huh, gotcha, bitch! How do you know? How do you know? I'm not seeing this, I'm not seeing this! Alright, hi everybody, uh, welcome to the Pseudo Random Podcast. I'm your host, uh, CJ. Here with me is, um, two of the usual guys, Clucker. Hey, what's up? And Dan. What's up, I'm back. After being gone for like a few weeks. <laughs> Uh, we also have a special guest today, uh, Clarissa Graffio, and um, if you want to say hi and tell them a little bit about yourself, what you do, and all the other podcasts and all the other stuff. Sure. Uh, hey guys, yeah, my name is Clarissa, and I am a regular co-host on the Anime World Order podcast. Uh, you also, if you ever buy Otaku USA magazine, I write reviews sometimes for them, so you might have seen my name pop up there. Um, that's mostly it. I've done guest bits on other podcasts here and there, so you may have also spotted me somewhere else if you listen to any other ones very right, fancy cool. guest we're having today <laughs> yeah yeah uh definitely uh welcome thanks a lot for uh coming on and everything you're pretty pretty excited about it sure no problem all right cool um so yeah for those of you who don't know what this uh what this podcast is um what we do essentially is it runs like a book club for anime and manga where we all uh recommend stuff to each other we split it up and watch it or read it throughout the weeks and talk about it afterwards um, there's one thing I wanted to note here, though, uh, due to some technical difficulties and scheduling issues, the schedule has changed a little bit from what it was, um, so this week we're actually going to be talking about, uh, Chinuo and Lucifer and the Biscuit and Hammer Volume 3, and next week is when we're going to be doing Elfin Lead, and, um, then we're going to be doing Lucifer and the Biscuit and Hammer Volume 4 with that. Alright, so, um... One thing that goes along with this, uh, there's a huge spoiler warning with uh, with this podcast because we're going to be going very in-depth and spoiling the ending and everything of both um, Chinubo as well as the entire volume 3 of Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, which are chapters 17 through 23. So if you have a problem with any of this being spoiled or anything, I suggest you not listen to this. Um, and yeah, there, there's going to be various other things we're going to spoil here or there because we just forget sometimes to just talk about stuff without trying to spoil a warning or whatever. Um, so yeah, um, like I said earlier, what we're going to be going over today, we're going to be talking about um, the first season of Chunyubo, also known as um, Love, Chunyubo, and Other Delusions. Um, then we're going to be talking about Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, Volume 3, which is Chapter 17 to, through 23. Then after that, we're going to be talking about uh, other anime or manga we've been watching recently, as well as we're going to be going over our random topic of the day, which is actually one that we got from our guest here, which is um, what aspects you focus most on whenever you're looking at or looking for anime or manga, like plot or characters or what have you. All right. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and start with um, Junibo here. Um, since I'm the one who recommended it, I figured I'll give it a quick uh, description here. It's a romantic comedy about um, a guy who just recently got over his chunyubo and everything, and a girl who is still very much in the thick of it with hers, and she keeps trying to bring it back into it, and yeah, the characters just interact, just typical romantic comedy with uh, some just really cool and unique elements in it. Yeah, I wouldn't call it just typical romantic comedy, especially with what the way the show transforms towards the end, because, dude, that was... Uh, a yeah crazy emotional roller coaster in there <laughs> yeah okay so it's a little bit off but I, I i had to come up with a summary off the top of my head no come right I, I didn't mean to correct you or anything i just like i was just adding something in of course you meant to correct me you always mean to correct me <laughs> <laughs> isn't that the job of nerds on the internet well, excuse pretty much sir, yeah. excuse me <laughs> oh yeah like uh i think college humor actually has a show now called um actually where <laughs> They read off a statement, and one thing is, or there could be multiple things false, and somebody dings in, like, in uh, Jeopardy, and says, um, actually, and then they say whatever is wrong about it. It's fucking great. It's great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, you'll always get at least one comment, like, you post anything on the internet, there'll always be at least one person that's just gotta correct you about something. Yeah, I, I'm typically the, that asshole, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only like that with CJ, specifically. Yeah, have you're that, an asshole. Yeah. yeah. No, we just have that nice, like, brother relationship, like, right. brother, brother quarrel relationship thing, but... I guess. <laughs> I like, I was like, I don't think that way, but, all right. <laughs> I mean, that, that's kind of what it turns into, yeah. I, mean, I guess. We, we kind of just pick her. Yeah. 
Um, so does anybody want to start off with their just overall impressions of it, of the show, of Chini Wolf? Uh, so I'll start off. So I have seen a lot of AMVs in my time because I like AMVs. And I always saw references to Chunibo, and I never saw, I, like, I didn't know what I was watching until I started watching Chunibo, and I saw some of, like, iconic scenes, and I was like, this is fantastic! No wonder this is in a ton of AMVs. Um, so, I found it very interesting how the guy was trying, like, he was trying desperately to try and, like, just forget his, like, past. He was like, I want to erase this from my memory, but <laughs> she wouldn't let it happen. Right. Well, yeah, Rika's she wasn't just like, nope. it. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to do that. You're going to embrace it. She wants to I try really to like, resurrect him. Like, I really like the main character from the get-go, like in the first few minutes of the first episode for very personal reasons. Oh, yeah. Yep, I, I, yep. <laughs> he's, he's the same, he uses the same voice actor as the, the guy who does Lelouch in Code Geass. And mm -hmm. as ah. soon as he goes into that, like... Which is the main character of Code Geass, by the way, to those who don't know. And as soon as he goes into that, like, dark flame master or whatever that was called, <laughs> it sounds just like Lelouch. Have, have, have you watched Code Geass, Clarissa? Yeah, yeah. So you probably know what I'm talking about, right? Yes. I was like, man, this is, like, somewhat like Code Geass in a way. But besides that, just the fact that, like, he would overthink everything I thought was hilarious. Because that made me think of yeah. myself a lot. How, right. like... Should I ask that girl out? Well, let me think of all the possibilities and all the different like <laughs> iterations that this could take to and everything. And it would just stay there and like think for five minutes and then be like, okay, I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, th I think that, um, I mean, on the one hand, it's, it's really funny because I feel like Lelouch is probably the kind of like character that, you know, a really Chunibyo like right, dude exactly. would invent for himself. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm like that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's probably, I think it's easy to relate to um, some of the characters in this, because I think, like, if there's not something that you can look back on yourself as a teenager and feel really embarrassed about, I think you're probably lying to yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's just a straight-up sociopath or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because, yeah, like, that's, that's the thing that got me. Yeah, oh. everybody does dumb shit, you know? It's, yeah. That, that's yeah. the thing that got me the most, like, just immediately like with that character and like understanding with him it's like oh god i have those moments sometimes where it's like no why did i do that i hate myself yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the very girl was, that was the completely opposite pretty much where she she just embraced it completely and she doesn't care at all at well, least yeah she's, the she's end, still but... in the thick of it and everything she's right. not gonna stop like being super into it until she's completely done like him then she's gonna be like oh god why did i do all that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think eventually you know she'll be like oh god but we'll yeah. see there are definitely more seasons cds which um like ovas and, and that kind of stuff have you actually watched everything cj i'm like halfway through the second season from like months ago i just never finished it i don't know why but um right I did see today on, uh, or yesterday rather, on Right Stuff. They had a pre-order up for the second season, so I actually have that pre-order now. So whenever that comes in, I'll be re-watching the second season of it. Cool. Yeah, because I did feel like the show had enough closure, which was something that I wasn't necessarily expecting from this. Yeah, at the end, definitely. Actually, yeah. like the last four or five episodes were really things that I wasn't expecting at all, and I, I, I actually wasn't sure how to feel about them as I watched. Because as CJ mentioned, for for the first half of the show, it's pretty much just like very fun very enjoyable romantic comedy thing with like i don't i think there even was a lot of he or anything it was just like very legit funny scenes like i actually mm -hmm. loved the episode with his uh friend what was the name of the guy again uh Ish ishiki or some isiki or something like that where he has written this uh, notebook with where he <laughs> ranked the girls based on like their their qualities or whatever it's like, I think he calls yeah. it like a QD ranking or something. And they found that notebook. And there's this whole like episode long drama about like the the fact that like he was asked out and then they found his notebook and now like he tells the other guy to shave his hair his hair off because of that, just so that he can compensate somehow, as if as if that made any sense at all. 
<laughs> and I don't know. I, I just I just really loved uh, the comedy well, in this show. Well, look, they don't commit ritual suicide anymore, so you have to figure <laughs> out some other way to answer for your shame. <laughs> Uh, and it was great how like when he was shaving his head, he was he was talking about how like oh my father got bald when he was forty five or something. I only have twenty years left of hair, and I'm cutting it out. Yeah, they just made it so dramatic. I love that scene so yeah. much. There is so much attention to detail on this as well. When like whenever they turn into the the, the I guess their fake reality kind of thing or just mm-hmm. the, their, their magical world they would show or they would show the battles and everything i thought everything oh, was really yes. well done and well animated like See, that's that's one of the things i absolutely love about this show and even people who are like not really into romantic comedies i try to get them to watch it just so they can see the the such um i guess juxtaposition of the fights where they'll go yes. from like super epic like hammer shooting lightning and everything. Yeah, yeah. You go back and someone's just like, uh, like waving <laughs> something around and that's it. Yeah, just like the ladle and the umbrella. Yes, like, yes. Uh, oh, the umbrella was great. Yeah. yeah, they're just like flailing and then that goes back to the epic battle with fucking it rockets almost, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It was almost like each one of them had like an, a weapon of their own. And I love the character they had the hair, like the little girl. Yeah, mm-hmm. Digamori. The, yeah. Yes, Digamori. She was great. I thought she was very funny. Uh, yeah, I think this was a good show to have Kyoto Animation work on because, um, you know, they're so good at what at, at animation and they're so, like, careful and they're really good with those kind of small details. Um, right. And so, you know, I think not only are they really able to have those action sequences, which was nice because, you know, they haven't been doing a lot of stuff that has that kind of material in it. They've mostly been doing just sort of regular, like, cute girls doing things moe shows. Right. Um, I mean, the last thing I can think of was maybe, you know, either Full Metal Panic Second Raid or uh, or Haruhi, where they had some of that kind of, of action or, or sci-fi stuff. So it's nice to see them stretch and do some of that again. But uh, yeah, and just, you know, I think it would be easy for the show done by some people to feel too generic or flat, but they're so right. good at, at conveying personality Mm-hmm. through like the small details of the character motions and expressions and things like that so yeah, yeah. i i really like the way they they portray that and even like other details like outside of the battle scenes and everything mm-hmm. it just the backgrounds were perfect every time like there, there were those few times where they would show someone doing something weird and actually if you pause and looked in the background there would be people like looking at them with weird faces like just as, as if there were people <laughs> walking by who saw them like reacting that way and be like what yes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, I, yeah, I love at the beginning, like, when, um, when they're at the, the train station, and, um, Rika is, like, showing off her stupid, like, wheelie yes. sneakers, <laughs> and, like, she's, like, you know, rolling around and doing her fake attacks and dodging stuff, and there's, like, guys behind her at the subway, and there's, like, one guy that's, like, looking at her weird, and then just, like, really <laughs> hurriedly, like, looks back at his book, like, I'm not seeing this, I'm not seeing this. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> See, I didn't pay attention to that at that point, but I did. Re- I do remember seeing that kind of stuff in other moments, which yeah. almost makes me feel like watching the whole thing again and just like looking for those uh, little right. details everywhere. Yeah. yeah, just like all all the stuff like that, the depth and they they did a really good job like actually capturing like the characters, like the emotions and everything of them. Just it, it just added so much like depth to it that yeah. I'm not really used to seeing and stuff. Especially like it's even weird. It, it has more than what I'm used to, and even like romantic comedy type of stuff or even just romance stuff that usually tries to do a better job of that stuff like they they went like above and beyond most stuff that i've seen like yeah just Mm -hmm. really good detail don't totally agree and the thing that surprised me the most is that for the longest time it just felt like this very chill uh funny show and then in the second half uh, when they started bringing up the story of like um Rika's father who had died and the fact yeah. that she used that to almost deny her father's death and believe that like she could see him again or something it suddenly like got I, I was pretty amazed by the fact that I got from be laughing like out loud literally laughing out loud in my computer and and then being depressed and like almost uneasy uh at watching the show just because of like the way they started going deeper and deeper into that that character's uh, past and everything. Yeah, and I didn't quite expect them to get that serious with it. Exactly. It, it, ca- it totally caught me off guard, that part. But I was really pleased that they did it because he did add more depth to the show in the end. Because if it was just like the same uh, episodic thing of them doing like funny stuff I, I, through the end, I would have liked it. I'd probably say it's good. But because of the way 
uh, it turned and went into this different territory. Uh, it made me come out of it with an actual message from the show, you know, and that's what I thought was really good about the very last part where she, she, she has gone back to normal, quote unquote normal, right? And then she goes back to being her true self. And then narrator to the show talks about how we each have our own like crazy side and maybe we shouldn't be as worried about about not showing it and just embrace it you know mm -hmm. and i feel like the show had a really clear a nice message at the end with those that, that was deepened by those last a uh, few episodes so yeah i'm done <laughs> yeah it's interesting because it feels a little bit like an extension of some of the recent works about otaku and um like i'm thinking for instance of princess jellyfish which i don't know if you guys have seen um, I've, it's, I've seen a little bit. Yeah. It's... But uh, it's really good. And, yeah. you know, one of the things that that series kind of um, talks about is how in some cases, like, the main characters uh, are like a super nerd for um, jellyfish. Like, she's really obsessed with jellyfish. Right. And, <clears throat> you know, the big thing about that is it talks about how that's like an extension of her kind of trauma and grief over the loss of her mother. And so I was thinking about that in kind of this this discussion of sort of an indulgence in fantasy as a, a way of dealing with um, things that are going on and that it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like at the end of the day, you still have to deal with what's happening right. in your life. But um, but it's not, you know, completely a terrible or like weird thing to to do some of this stuff. And I think it was great how they handled that in the sense that even though she she ended up going back to to her quote unquote crazy self she did deal with the with the facts that she was denying before so she did go through that process mm -hmm. of growing and and realizing her father had actually died and accepting that but then also accepting that she could uh, be that personality that she she wanted to and that she could embrace that personality that helped her get through that and that helped her grow in that sense mm -hmm. what are you got any um anything to add here clucker um you guys have pretty much covered it all. Uh, I, I really enjoy how some of the times, how over the top it was. Yeah. Um, one of the one of the times, and this is just in the very first episode, like from the very first episode, you kind of knew what you were getting yourself into because in the very first episode, when um, I forget her, the main the main girl Rika girls not Rika when Rika confronts him like when they're in like the nursery office and everything like that and he's like how do you know how do you know and then he's like literally bouncing <laughs> off the walls and doing all this crazy <laughs> yes. shit and it's hilarious right. it's literally hilarious and he's like literally bending like it's it's so funny <laughs> how hard he's trying to figure this out and she's just like well you know i have this crazy eye <laughs> and right it's well and it's they play just... it up yeah sorry no no you're you're absolutely right they play it up and it's really funny how much they play it up like, right they don't they don't stop they just keep playing it up and that's <laughs> really funny yeah um, and they almost for a second like when she first like pulls up her eye patch it's like for a second it almost seems like maybe she is really gonna <laughs> yes. have some kind of weird yeah. powers I or believe something, it would be. but then yeah. no like it's just a contact yeah. <laughs> yeah i love how they made her like fall and then the contact lens falls in the ground <laughs> yes. as well and she's like oh my god where is it where is it but, yeah, <laughs> that I, I did actually get that exact um, that exact thing you're talking about. Like whenever that part first happened, I was like, "Wait, what if what if this is actually a thing that's happening?" Right. <laughs> and he's just like, "Holy shit!" I was pretending, but it's all real, and maybe he's gonna get <laughs> right. into it. Yeah. It's like, "Oh, no, nope. ne never mind. <laughs> Guess <Yeah>. not." <laughs> oh, yeah. I do want to mention that I really like the the teacher character. I think her name was Nana. And yes. like she wasn't there all all the time. She wasn't like a, a a big deal to the story. But the parts where she would show up and kind of like play around with them and kind of getting into their game, but at the same time kind of making them screw it up. Oh yeah. Like there was this one part in the beginning where Rika is pretending to have a different spirit living inside her or something, yes. and she starts interpreting it. <laughs> yeah. And she's speaking English because the spirit is technically like from London, and she's doing that great like Japanese English that we're used to, mm -hmm. to listening to. <laughs> and the teacher just actually starts talking English to her, and she's like, oh. Yeah, and she's like, crap, I didn't think this through. I didn't yeah. think she'd call me on it. Uh, so yeah. I loved how they alternate between, like, her being, like, super into it and, like, super serious about her fake personality, but then... Um, but then as soon as something bad would go wrong, she'd kind of not know what to do and just be like, oh, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was very 
realistic in that sense where they didn't like they, they didn't push it to the point where we could call oh there's no way she would have thought of that through you know like right so i think they they they, they did a good job holding back some of that stuff as well so they, they were just genuinely clever with the writing of this like yes. they just did a good yes. job with it like just some of the jokes and everything and some of the stuff like that, especially just the, the like what you're talking about, the one where it's just like, start talking English and the teacher starts talking. She's like, uh, like <laughs> just, just being able to think all that out and actually design the comedy like that made it a lot better than like other, I guess, more traditional slapstick stuff because yeah. that stuff, I mean, it can, it can, it can be funny, but if, unless it's done really well, it just gets old and just being genuinely clever like this one is just makes it so much better. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad that they didn't go for some of the lazy, like low hanging fruit of like, oh, Oh, you know, I fell on this girl and my face fell into her boobs or yeah. you know, oh, whatever. Oh, thank God they didn't do that. I was so happy about it. Like, yeah. Even in the, in the beginning when she falls over him for the first time, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay, so that's the moment where he's going to have his hands on her boobs or something like that. And they didn't do that. They actually didn't do that. So They, they were probably actually making that as a joke in and of itself. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, that <laughs> yeah. probably was a thing where it's just like, ha gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, even then, like she straight up, like she straight up ask, asks him, "Do you want to see?" And then, like he's like so <laughs> shocked. And then the next scene, she's gone. She's like, "All right, gonna continue." So right. it's like they just hang it out there, and it's like, "Nope, we're oh, not yeah, doing that." Yeah, that's the one in the very first scene. Yeah. 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 Uh, also, her sister was a very interesting character, in my opinion, because mm. she technically wasn't playing around with them, but at the same time, so at some moments, it yes. seemed like she was. So. I, I, I love when they included her in, like, the super epic battle scenes and everything. Yes. And then you go back to it, she's just fucking hitting her sister on the head with a ladle <laughs> and shit. It's like, yes. yes. <laughs> And there was this one like very subtle thing, but that they they put in twice in the in the show where hit like her sister was meeting his the main character's sister, and they were like playing house or something like that, like pretending to be married or something, but they were getting a divorce. So I don't know if you guys got, caught caught that scene, but there was like this very quick scene where it, it showed like the it showed Rika's sister with the main character's little sister. And they were like signing a divorce paper or something because they were playing a game about the getting divorced. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know. I just thought that was like weird, but pretty hilarious. But... Yeah, I I remember that just just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also just so that like we don't go on without mentioning, there was also another character, Nibutani, which I don't think we have pretty much uh, mentioned at all yet. Oh yeah, she's great. <laughs> that, yeah, that was more was... summer, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah, which was a really good character as well, especially because she she was she was kind of she could kind of relate to the main character in the sense that she was also one of the ones that was trying to forget her past and, and the things she has she had done, but he kept coming back at her. <laughs> well, Dick mm-hmm. and Morty kept bringing it back and everything. Like she couldn't, yes, <laughs> she couldn't get away from it because of that. Right. And yeah, I, I think it's parts... interesting the way that they're that they kind of relate to one another. Um, yes. Yeah. Especially in the beginning, where like it almost feels like she's totally hitting on him. I was like, oh my god, this girl is very easy. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I straight up like. thought like because I knew going into it, it was a romance comedy. I was like, oh, so those are going to be the two that get together because they're they both got over the stuff in their past and everything, and they're just going to be an item soon. Like they're both dealing with the same stuff. And right, yeah. and she she does like out of nowhere in the first episode where she gets a little more focused, which is I think the third or fourth episode. She she gets to the main character and she's like, okay, so can I go to your house? after this or something mm-hmm. and you're like oh my gosh she's quick yeah <laughs> and it ended up being something else completely um yeah but yeah i really liked her and she had like one of my favorite lines of the show i, I even like took a note for it in the very end where i guess they're like she, she's talking about how how rika used the uh, like use that new personality to to deny her past and everything and then the the main character is like oh that's very deep and then she says no, you're just shallow. Mm. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a big deal, but I just like that line. So, yeah. You know, just to remember to talk about her because she was a very fun character as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we should elaborate a little bit on that whole arc there. The reason, like, because essentially, uh, one of Rika's best friends, Dekamori, which is, I think, what they call her throughout there. I forgot her other name, but. Um, Senai. Yeah. But, um, yeah, she would go around and she essentially was like 
her her Junibo personality thing or whatever was like worshiping the other one, which was Nibutani's um like personality and everything, which was Mori Summer. Mm-hmm. Where she straight up did stuff with a blog and a, did she actually do video stuff online as well? I, I think so, or at least there were pictures. Yeah. So she straight up like had almost like her own Bible type of thing that she had and mm-hmm. just had all this stuff in it and um she she was pretty much like what Dekamori was like worshipping and everything almost and she wanted to get away from it but Dekamori was still super into it and that's how it kept coming back and everything she actually had like the the book and everything and even even tried to in the middle of the school like start reading stuff out of that yes <laughs> oh and since you mentioned that I loved how like every time she would read it she would like go crazy and be like yeah. no yeah because that's so true like whenever you're whenever someone is looking at something you did way back when uh, that you're pretty much ashamed of you oh. I always have the like kind of reaction even if it's just inside your head where you're like no that could not happen (laughs) oh yeah god i was you know i was moving and like packing and unpacking and like going through stuff and found like my old like stupid sketchbooks and stuff (laughs) and it's like oh my god i was such a weeboo dork (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's always great when those when those moments happen yeah 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 and i think it's interesting like you know, not just uh, Mori Summer and the main character, but actually Mori Summer and Dekamori, like, you know, Nibutani and Dekamori, like, how they kind of relate to one another with this, you know, Dekamori is, you know, worshipping this kind of online version of Mori Summer that she saw. Meanwhile, like, the real yeah. person is right there. Yeah. And, and she doesn't know, believe it. <laughs> right, yeah, and she doesn't believe her at all, and, like, so, and they're they're always, like, fighting because, you know, Dekamori doesn't believe she's Mori Summer, and Nibutani, like, wants to get rid of this stuff and like put it away yeah so it was a great dynamic as well and i love how like they finished the anime without her ever believing it (laughs) yeah like i don't think she accepted it at any point (laughs) no (laughs) yeah yeah that's i mean hell that like i said earlier that's one thing i loved so much about this is just the the characters had so much more personality and were so much more diverse than you typically see like Mm -hmm. they they definitely went a very different route with um with this anime and didn't make everything generic they they drastically changed it had a whole new spin on it which was the the chunibo stuff but because of that it gave the characters so much more depth because it gave them such easy to relate to pasts and everything and it just it it just made made the anime so much deeper than it that yeah. probably I mean hell it probably than it had the right to be I guess <laughs> I mean yeah, yeah towards the end and everything they got super deep and all that but even just like the first half it still had way more depth than it should have had especially for like how funny it was and how good of a romantic comedy it was yeah, yeah I, I think, think maybe the exception was like the one girl I forget her name but who just sl- sleeps all the time yeah oh yeah there's her I totally forgot her like she doesn't really do anything like she's sort of there but <laughs> I, I do and have the, one they, question they, they... go ahead Gears with her I I think this is from the first season. If if it's not, it's from the second season. It's not really spoiling anything. But was like, was there anything to do with a napping contest in this? I think I don't so. Think so. Or maybe that was no, early second season because I watched a little bit into the second, but not all the way through. Okay, here's what I remember. Uh, in the very beginning, she wants to make the nap club. That's why they get together. Mm-hmm. And then she is napping all the time, including the time where the main character's best friend confesses at her and she's like in front he he's like in front of everybody in the school in the typical school festival or whatever and he's like i love this girl and she's leaping in the middle of the festival like randomly uh but that's the only things that i think and, and then she she does become somewhat important in the end because she gives a message to the main character that was passed by rika mm-hmm. but i don't remember any napping contest or anything like that so that's probably from a different season yeah okay yeah, you should you should watch the second season just for that. <laughs> I would be excited because like this show really is one where I can't really find much to complain. Like I love the characters. I thought it was very enjoyable. I I, I laughed a lot through like good majority of the the episodes, and I think the writing was was great. The comedy was great. Uh, the animation was really good as well. So I I don't really have anything to complain. I love the show. And I, I'm excited to watch whatever else they, they, they have for it. I'm just curious, like, where are they going to keep building up? Because I felt like there was enough closure on for the first season. Um, As, Go ahead. I forgot, like, how where where was, like, the romance stuff at and everything at the end of this season? I think they were, like, technically dating because they had okay. said, I love you to each other. But they had not... I don't remember seeing a kiss. 
Okay. Well, just to give you a little bit of an idea, not to really spoil anything, but the the second season does focus a little bit on just them developing a deeper relationship and everything. Not not as in sex or anything like that, but I mean just them becoming much closer and understanding each other more and all that. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they definitely do more with um Dekamori and and uh Morris Summer as well. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great cuz I I really wanted to see more from those cuz mm-hmm. that's the one part where things didn't really get resolved at all, but okay, that makes me excited. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed this one more than I expected to. Um like it didn't seem at first like something I would be into, um but I actually it was really fun. So, yeah. And I I was surprised that I didn't hear more about this one cuz like usually like Kiwani's shows are really popular and I Yeah. I remember like seeing animated gifs and stuff from this here and there online but i didn't really hear a lot of people talking about it specifically i'd probably have never watched this if cj had not recommended it here so. mm. thanks yeah. cj yeah one one thing if you if you want to see it since now you guys have watched this if you go to my anime list you actually understand what the dancing gif is and on my page <laughs> yes it's oh, a, okay it's actually from the intro where she's like got like the pentagram thing is a hula hoop oh and everything. yes <laughs> it's so good uh, like instantly when I saw that, I was like, I I need this in my life <laughs> somewhere. So I I grab that and use that occasionally for for yeah. like icons and stuff. Well, I think ever since Haruhi, like the rule is that every Kyoto Animation opening has to have dancing, <laughs> opening and or ending. So mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's about it that I have for this show. From what I remember, but yeah, I really liked it. Really fun show. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, you got anything else to add, Click? Or you've been quiet for a while there. <laughs> um, no, we covered a lot. Um. Where you guys mainly covered most of it. I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I understand why there's so many gifs and AMVs of this show now, because it's it's really hilarious and there's also a great blend of that. Like like Dan said, there's a great blend because at the end there they go into why, kind of Rika did what she did because of her father's death and whatnot. So I really enjoy the show. Um. It's something I want to keep watching, and I'm actually probably going to watch it again because I feel like there's stuff I've missed as as we've discussed. There's just little things I've missed, and maybe that's exactly what this animation studio does well, which is they do these very little things that you may not catch originally, but when you watch it again, you're like, ah, that's a really nice touch. So I'm excited to watch it again, and I'm going to watch it again when I get time but it was a very enjoyable series. I'd probably, if on my anime list, I'd probably have to give it like an eight or nine. It's it's really good. Awesome. Um, I'm I'm glad you all enjoyed it. Cause uh, just so you guys know, I'm actually the one who got um Clarissa to, to watch it as well uh, a few weeks ago and stuff. So I actually got all these guys to watch it. So yeah, I'm, I'm nice, great. You yeah, win I'm, this round. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> you all plus win CJ. this round. I won well, the last round. Well, he still has to watch Code Geass. <laughs> well, yeah, that's like the that's the thing we're doing after Elfin Lead, right? Yes. You yes. shut the fuck up then, Dan. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, pretty it's much. on the schedule. I have I, to watch it now. I look forward to talking to you at work about the, the beautiful, amazing train wreck that is Code Geass. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, 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 I trust that he will enjoy it, I think. I'm still going to tear it apart, like... Dan. Just for you, I'm going to just <laughs> right. destroy it. Everything I can. he doesn't like mech just... at all. Right. So he's been telling me he's going to like hate it or whatever, no, no, or just no, like no, tear no. it apart. Not at all. Not, yeah. I have not yeah. said I'm going to hate it. I said okay. I'm going to tear it apart just to fuck with you because it's your favorite anime and it has mechs in it, which immediately means I have tons <laughs> of fuel to tear it apart. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, okay, uh, we'll see. Mechs, it, it, mechs fuel CJ's rage. Let's, let's, just, let's just say that if I watch it, I end loving it. I'll be able to tear it apart because it's not a typical mech anime and the mechs are pointless or something like that. Like, I've thought about this in depth, Dan. I'm going to make this happen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dan, so, there's no winning in this situation. <laughs> All right. All right. That's fine. Uh, Let's see. That's going to be an interesting episode. I'm sure we're going to argue a lot. Watch me completely <laughs> fail now and just be like, yeah, it was good. And that's it. Like, don't say anything else. <laughs> uh, it was good. Uh, awesome. Um... So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for uh, Chinubo there. Um, even though, obviously, this is all spoiled for people who, if they haven't watched it, they should still go back and watch it anyway, because it's incredibly good. Um, yeah. It's, it's it's one of the ones that are legitimately surprisingly good. It's like, this, like, like I said earlier, this has no right to be as good as it is because of, like, what it's about and everything. It, it I don't know. It's just really good. <laughs> yep. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and move on to uh, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer Volume 3. Yeah. So, 
I'm I'm assuming like last time which this... I didn't read. <laughs> what? I don't know, I just said which I didn't read, so I'm gonna let you guys yep. take to control that at all. <laughs> yeah. But well, um, if you don't want spoilers, I recommend you muting yourself. I no I what. edit. I am the one who edits. I, the I podcast know, clicker. and what you can do, <laughs> Dan, there's is no way around read, it. <laughs> read volume one through three before you even do the editing. I'm editing. Like I've heard things already uh, from the last episode oh, that I'm damn. currently editing. But well, at least there's not right, a whole lot that really the happens topic. in this volume. So okay, all right, fair enough. All yeah. right, CJ. So, what do you think so far of the uh, last thing that happened in the chapter? Well, just so you know where we're at and everything, it's the the last thing that happened here is they actually have all the Beast Knights together now. They actually know who they all are, and essentially the the princess makes a, a declaration to them saying what they're gonna do and all that. So, and that's all where right. it stops. Okay. And I'm I'm assuming so... you have like a huge list of questions like you did last time. I have a pretty good amount of questions. So. Um, when you first are introduced to the new knights, which you're first introduced to, like, the horse, and then you get a, a, a an idea of the snake knight, and then when you see the horse, he's like, there's 12 of us, blah, 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 blah. And immediately, immediately, the princess looks directly at Yui and says, you are going to take them on 10 on 1. Are you okay with this? And he was like, yep, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I gotta give it to this guy. He has some major fucking balls. He's just like, fuck it, I'll take on every, every one of them. I'll probably die, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was pretty awesome. Um, I really liked the symbolism they had in this one, uh, in this volume specifically, because he, there was a lot of chain references. I don't know if you remember them, but when he was about, like, there was a point where he was literally, he couldn't sleep because he kept having nightmares about mm -hmm. these creatures just literally killing him and he couldn't sleep and there was a whole bunch of chain references and then in this volume he finally kind of like broke those chains and then like literally like fucked up a golem he pretty much was yeah. like i'm throwing you round yeah that that was pretty isn't that when they were talking about um what the fuck was it like oh what's his name what's the uh, dude who died Already, I forgot his uh, name. Shino Home. Spoilers. Shino Shino Home. Shino Shino something. Something, yeah. But um, I, I do like how I think that's the point when he realizes, like, hey, he he actually passed on his martial arts skills and everything or whatever to him, right? Yep. Or something that like that. was that was his wish. His wish yeah. was to pass on his skills to Yui. So like, Yui can actually do things now. He's not just a useless piece of shit anymore. <laughs> yeah. It not was. It's Pretty not like he hasn't tried, like we've been saying. He, he does everything he can. He just, he has no ability or strength to do anything <laughs> until now. Now he can actually fuck shit up. Yeah. Um, I also found it very interesting uh, how the two golems combined mm -hmm. to just, like, this one Omega being that even the princess, like, who's super overpowered could not, like, she couldn't do it by herself. She couldn't mm -hmm. beat this thing. Like, this thing was just, like, super resilient. And it was interesting that she wasn't overpowered. Like, she can't just, like, one hit, I crush you. Mm -hmm. one, one thing I found the most interesting about that, too, just because it was funny, was how they combined. Like, one of them just ate the other one. And then they kind of <laughs> yeah. just melded together and just, like, popped up to be the fucking, the big golem. And start fucking shit up. Yeah. It, it, uh... It it was it was very nice. That whole that whole like first half of the volume was really cool. And then the second half of the volume was really cool too because you kind of um you kind of see almost another like love interest try to come into the picture, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Um and also I I w all right, let me ask you this. What do you think of the crow so far? Like what do you think of the crow knight? Uh the dude's like I don't know. He's very weird, and I don't know a good way to describe him. He 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 just likes fighting and shit, and he he just picks fights because he can. Except like it's weird. He'll 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 do that, but at the same time, like just going around the school and stuff, he was the nicest guy in the fucking world to everyone. Everyone loves him and everything. Then he just tries to fight everyone. <laughs> other than that, like I I don't I don't really know what to what to think of him yet. He's kind of just crazy. He is. Yeah. You. I feel like in the end you might think of him in a different way, and I'm interested to see how that progresses. Um, did you notice any of the um poking fun at the anime tropes? I I may have, but I kind of just just skimmed by it. 
Probably. I probably just didn't, wasn't paying attention enough to notice them, because I'm usually bad at picking that stuff out anyway, especially when yeah. it's making fun of it specifically, because I just... It's I'm, it's it's know. very subtle in this series. It's not like, oh, blatantly in your face, but there's specifically a scene where he's kind of like dreaming, and you know how him and the princess are in like their own separate little world when he's dreaming? Mm-hmm. And like he has his eyes closed, and it looks like he's about to grab something, and the first thing you would assume was, oh, he's gonna grab boobs, right? No, he literally just grabs her face, and it's yeah, just like... I remember that. Ah. That was good. <laughs> it's like full on, like right there. Yeah, it uh. was It was pretty hilarious. Um, um, Let's see, what else? I have more questions. Um, um, so what do you think of the other knights? Or what do you think, let me specifically ask you, what do you think of the cat knight? Cat Knight. I'm trying to remember him. Who who was he again? He was the fat one who is very intelligent. Um he how do I, how else do I describe him? Um I don't know if you've seen his ability yet, so I don't wanna say that. I, I don't remember much about him. I might I might have just been something I missed, but I, I don't really have too much of an opinion on him yet. Okay. It would make sense because you haven't really like you haven't really seen much of him. Um, I I enjoyed how um, I I guess the one thing that I like about the Crow Knight so much is the rivalry that he and um, Yui have. Well, and yeah, like, just because of his brother, because he beat his brother. It's I don't kind know. Of. I feel I feel like it develops more. Um, well, that's kind of all it is right now. There, it's, it's that and a little bit of essentially like love interest stuff for the princess, but that's barely started. That's so true. I could see that getting a lot more in depth and everything. But other than that, there's not really much more to it as of yet. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, like I said, I'm very interested. Oh, that's something. Um, you finally saw an interesting guy. Um, and his entrance was kind of crazy, and he literally just comes out of the, like, mouth of the seven, like, seven-eyed golem. Oh, the fucking wizard, yeah. The wizard. He, um... He seems, like, super aloof and just, like, kind of out of it, at least right now, like... Yeah, he he... kind of, he kind of just gives no fucks. Yeah. (laughs) He he seems like he's gonna be a very interesting character because he he's hell he even just straight up said it's like oh it wouldn't be like fun to to do this right now because I just destroy you guys or whatever like he said something like that and just like went away yep. and it's like that's kind of cool where he's not just gonna be out to destroy everyone he's actually gonna um like at least try to um give them a chance so that way it's like more fun for him because he definitely seems like the type of guy where it's just like I mean if we're gonna fight it might as well be fun like it it, it was similar to in um. Fucking Joseph. Oh, God. Joseph and Jojo is how he, he talked to, to uh, Wamu and all that into, like, giving him a month to train and all that. Like, that's the type of thing I, I see from him where he's like, I need to at least get them up where it'll be a challenge so it'll be fun. Like, that's that's kind of what it seems like with him, with the way he's um kind of just there but not at the same time. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I guess you did get to see all of the all of the knights. Just briefly, a few of them. Yeah, just briefly. You get to you get to see a lot more of everything about them. Well, I would um, assume so. If that's this is like this is because this is still in the stages where it's building up everything, and it it hasn't actually gotten into the meat of it yet. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, because I mean, hell, the first like the whole first like volume or two was just explaining how Yui got to the point where he can actually fight now and actually do things. <laughs> like, yep. It's it's definitely a very so, uh, slow progressing story, but I think that's why I like it so much because it's so like it's so it it, it builds up so well. Yeah, I mean, um, hell, me and you are the same with most of our likes as far as like manga anyway. Like that's that's the reason I like a lot of them that I do. Like that's one reason why I loved Nozoki Anna so much was the slow build up and progression of everything and character development. Like. Those are the things that have just like so good and actually make things so good typically for me anyway. Like I don't know, they they've done a good job with that stuff so far and it seems like it's building up to something that's going to be good. So, yeah, I've been enjoying it. It yep. it definitely has that good mix like uh, JoJo's did as well of a little bit of romance stuff here. It's obviously a lot more than JoJo's does, but um has a good bit of the comedy, good bit of dialogue and a like the fights are actually good too, and they don't draw them out. There's not a bunch of bullshit. It's, hey, this dude's here. Fight him. Oh, either one side or the other died. Cool. We're moving on. <laughs> like, 
Yeah, Done. it's very short and sweet. Um, I'm really excited for you to read the next volume because there's. I'm going to discuss like why I enjoy the like act like the combat of this anime so much. Um, and you'll you'll pretty much I'm giving you a little, a little little sneak peek. There will be combat, obviously, in the next volume. I would be surprised if there wasn't, Clecker. Obviously, but um, there will be combat in a shonen manga. It, it's like right? that. That's it's, like I saying would... to somebody who's watching Game of Thrones, someone may die in the next episode. Yeah. No I, fucking shit. <laughs> I don't know if I'd consider this shonen. I don't know what I would consider this. Um, I don't know because I. I guess it is. Would would all right? Would, if if someone is technically fighting for love, is that still a shonen? Usually, shonen's all about friendship. Mm. What, what do you think, Claire? So I get your more professional opinion than any of us have. I'm sorry, what was that? I, I haven't if, read any of if, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hanger, so... If, if someone is fighting for love instead of friendship, is it still a shonen? Or could it still be considered a shonen? Or could it still be considered a shonen? Well, technically... um, Okay, so technically, what it's classified as depends on where it's published. So if it's published in a shonen magazine, it's shonen. Okay. Yeah. Regardless was, of the uh, content. This. Yeah, I think it has more to do with target audience than anything else. Yeah. So this was definitely if, not published in a shonen magazine, so it's not shonen. Uh, okay. where was it published? Um, um, what was it again? Well, you, you said it's not like published in that, but you don't yeah, know. Talking about things hey! that you don't know. <laughs> I I know it wasn't in the shonen magazines because. Hold on. Let me let me pull up the fucking. Reference. Yeah, learn learn to fake this better, Clicker. <laughs> Young King Comics. Okay, Young King. I think. Let's see. I think Young King might be Seinen. Yeah, it looks like Seinen from what I pulled up here. Ah. Yeah. Well, at least according to yeah. um uh manga updates, it's Seinen. Yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, it's it's for um it's a, for a little older than Shonen audience. Um, but still primarily male targeted. All right, makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, All right. Anyway, thanks for that clearing that up for us. <laughs> but yeah, the stuff we uh, normally are terrible at. Um. We are. But anyways, yeah. So I'm yeah I'm happy that you're enjoying it. It gets so much better. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm assuming so. It seems like it's because, like I said, it still seems like it's definitely in the build up phase where not really much has happened yet. It still seems like they're they're doing a lot to set up what's going to happen soon, so I'm, I, I'm quite excited for it. Oof, me and Roberto are excited for you to run into um, Don't be certain... spoiling shit for me now. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, just... I, I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop. All right. I'll stop. Just, just, just me and Roberto are excited for you to get to a certain yeah. section. I mean, it's, it's okay to spoil stuff for Dan right now, because it's his own fault for not being up to date, but spoiling yeah, for me, Dan, no. No, that thing, will not go. <laughs> and then there's this giant other thing, and... and, and don't worry about it. It's not like I'm paying attention at all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's harsh. That hurts. <laughs> but but since you talked about being excited, Clicker, about something that's coming up, segue. I'm excited for the next segment of this podcast because we're already like 45 minutes in. <laughs> so what you're saying is you're excited for High School DxD because I'm pretty sure that's what's next on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, I haven't watched that either, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and move on to the next segment here, which is uh, other anime or manga we've been watching or reading. And uh, I guess since Clucker brought it up, we can go go ahead and go into uh, High School DxD, which. I've gotten through episode four, but Clicker's only gotten through three. So, um, then you can either just not listen to this and watch it before you edit stuff later, or there's going to be a lot of spoilers here as well, because I, I need to talk about this. I've waited <laughs> several weeks to talk about this. So Go ahead, do your thing. <laughs> um, uh, so, so we'll shit's start gotten with real, second, pretty much. <laughs> we'll start with the second episode, and then yeah. we'll work our way up to shit's gotten real. Yeah. So the second episode was very, I don't know, it was just build up. It was kind of character build up, but there are several things I liked about it. One, you got to see Rias get embarrassed. Straight up, she was embarrassed, and she was adorable when she was embarrassed. <laughs> Um, yeah, because it was it was it was the it was the traditional thing where families kind of poking fun at you and everything yep. and talking about your friends and all that. She she essentially just had the whole thing of the God damn it, mom! <laughs> like it's yeah. essentially she threw a fit like that. It was great. Yeah, it was. Uh, um, 
it was also interesting how everyone got their own like little training partner and everything mm-hmm. like that, and then they went off to go do their training. Well, I thought Issei's was just a fucking dragon, a dragon. that was a demon. Go, go, like, and then like he li- like the dragon literally just like picks him up and is like, let's let's go. Yeah, and he's like, fucking, no. It was so good. Full on dragon reincarnated as a demon, but still a dragon. Like, cool. Let's let's do this. <laughs> fucking great. Yeah. Um. And then Akeno was versing her father, which yeah. like that was super interesting. And I want to know, like, I was, I like, I wanted to know more. I was like, all right, what, what happened here? Like, yeah. I want to know. So it's it's very interesting so far. Well, um, yeah, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to that because there's a lot of build up so far of things that are gonna happen later on in the anime and everything that I'm I'm quite excited about, like things like that with uh, Akino talking to her dad and actually training with her dad. Like, I want to see where that's gonna go in the future here. Yeah, same here. Um, so that was that was just a brief thing of the second episode. No, so another th- thing though was was second episode the first one where Kaneko is I I just want Dan to actually see this. I'm not going to describe it exactly, but is this the first episode where she's fucking adorable as shit yes. or was it episode 3? No, it was episode 2. Yes. I saw that I was immediately just like I yeah. I I, I was already like she was by far best girl in this and it's just like, "Yep, no, off the charts. You cannot well, you cannot beat her now." Well, like <laughs> even even like like if you watch the closing, like in the closing she's adorable. Like I don't know if you've yeah. watched the closing from beginning to end, but you see her and you're like, "Ah, she's adorable." Yeah. Um so yes. Yeah, um, you you can't beat Kaneko now. It's there's there's no way. I'm sorry, but I'm really interested in Akano and to see what she would do. Granted, because you just like Sadis and fucking Yandere's I and shit. Do not. I <laughs> You've guess. got some problems, man. <laughs> I only like them when it's anime characters. If that makes it any better. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't anyways, know about that, man. Anyways, um, yeah. Uh, I've enjoyed Koneko, and I'm, I'm not sure what happened in episode four, but in episode three, um, what happened in episode three? You, episode three is where they actually had the, uh, the big event. I forgot what the event actually was, but it had, like, a lot of different demon families, and devil families, rather, from, like, all around the, the region, and you also got to understand and talk about, um, uh, the issues with Kaneko's sister, so you actually get to see stuff happen between them. Yeah, which is really yeah, good. Yeah. And the fight, that fight was great. Yeah, love... dude, that fight was so good. Fucking Issei finally doing his balance breaker. Yeah, hey, Dan, finally. Just, just so you can, uh, uh, I just, I just want to see what you think. Like, essentially, Issei finally gets his ultimate move. Take a guess how he ends up having to like force himself out to do it. <laughs> uh, something very perverted that has to do with boobs. That's that's my guess. Right that's on the money. I guess based on, on something. <laughs> right, right on the money. <laughs> but whose boobs was it, Dan? Rias or everyone's? Not I don't know. not gonna tell you that part. You'll have to figure that out for yourself. All right. But uh, yeah, definitely a very perverted thing with boobs. Obviously, it's yeah. it's like the one thing that that is his power. His power is boobs. Yeah. So we do some very mature talk here. The the pseudo random podcast glory says you can see. <laughs> Yeah. Um this is this is just so just so all the listeners here know and everything. This is not the type of show I typically watch with this much like pervertedness and etchy and everything uh-huh, like that. Sure. I know. Yeah. This is just yeah. one that <laughs> sure. this is one that was yeah. practically forced on me by a past roommate and we ended up we watching be- we every day. We believe it, CJ. We believe in you. <laughs> to be I'm fair, every person I know that has watched High School DXD has liked it. So they're doing something right. Yeah, it's it's definitely not the typical one. They're there's it's it has well i i don't want to say it has more depth but it kind of does <laughs> i i don't know a good way to describe it it's it's not as very typical and um yeah it's just not as typical as most of them it's, it, it doesn't follow the stuff near as bad I, I i guess there is a story it's, i'm just not necessarily as big of a fan as of the story uh as you guys are but oh you you just watch it for the boobs the, yeah, pretty much. The thing <laughs> is, the show understands what it is, and it does it very well. Oh yeah, it, it embraces it. It, it, it embraces yeah, the yeah, shit right. out of itself. I mean, the and fucking I think, boob tree, and oh god, that was an OVA, yeah. but that was still but really still. damn good. Uh, well, you yeah, know, if you're gonna make a show primarily, you know, to show boobs, then you might as well just be honest about it. Yeah, yeah they're definitely right. honest about it. <laughs> they, like, like, literally, the first episode. 
the character was like, I want to touch some boobs. And that was the yeah. very first line you heard. First thing he says, <laughs> I want to grab some <laughs> boobs. First and fucking thing. It's like, well, I know what we're in for now. Oh, just, yep, the it was fuck just like, don't ruin your mic, CJ. Yeah, you're, you're going to have fun cutting that out, Dan. Just slap the fuck yep, out of my mic. <laughs> so uh, you knew exactly what you were in for when you when you started this entire thing. And it's it's it actually kind of started off kind of slow. But it's become this giant grand thing that's pretty nice. Yeah. Like, the, the story has taken over a lot. While still actually cap- keeping all of the etchy stuff that people fucking love from it and everything. But the story has picked up to the point where it's actually a fucking crazy, awesome, like, it deep story. I'm so Super glad it shit. got a third season. Oh, oh, yes. It needed it so badly. Unless they wrap it up really well at the end of this, it's gonna need a fourth, too. Which, it'll fucking get it, because people love this show. <laughs> it, it, and I think it's popular between both Japan and America. Yeah. Which is a huge thing. Which is why, like... Which is why um, Attack on Titan, like, no matter how long that, that thing will take, that thing is so popular between both the American populace and the Japanese populace that it's going to get it's going to get the seasons it needs to get. Like, they're already planning for the second season. They just are waiting for the manga to get further ahead. I'm, I'm yeah. very Yeah, unless glad. it massively crashes and burns yeah. in the near future, then. But I, I don't, don't foresee happening. Yeah, I don't see that happening unless they decide, oh, hey, let's start taking it over ourselves and let's start adding filler and doing all this other stuff. I will be which... so pissed. Uh, yeah. no. But the thing is, yeah. they. Could I'm have actually already... surprised they didn't, because usually that's yeah. just what they do. Yeah, yeah I'm, usually that is well, what they do. But since you mentioned Attack and Titan, I'm just going to use it as one of my things for the segment anyway, because I have rewatched it in the in the past month, and it's been like a long time since I've been on the podcast, so I have not had the opportunity of mentioning it before. But well, something that I did notice when I rewatched that I had not noticed the first time is that. The, the closer they get to the later episodes, the more uh, not, not it's not that they put filler in, but the it seems like the episode like the actual content of each episode gets shortened at, at each one. It's more drawn out. Like at the end, yeah, because because at the end, like there are some of the episodes that are pretty much just like this huge what happened on the last episode opening segment and then the actual opening animation and music or whatever and then an episode for like flashbacks and like really slow scenes and everything so can i can really see how like they already really careful not to get too far in the first season so that they would have enough to put in for the next one and everything so i i, f- I feel like they're doing somewhat of a, a good job with that yeah. you know, avoiding that problem at least yeah uh it's ways to stall to make sure that the manga <laughs> finishes. Yeah. Yeah. I just I'm have really... five minute openings and then like two minute closings and then only have like actual ten minutes of content. You're yeah. good. <laughs> you should running one of my favorite things about the fucking opening of that is I think it was on 4chan, somebody just put, you can't just slap the, the theme of this on yes. anything. And then somebody literally just took that exact uh Screen quote. capped it, yeah. and they then made an, the... a video of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my god. I, I need to see that. But I'm actually going to take a note of that. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll look it up here in a little bit when we're done, because I, I want to cool. see your reaction as you're watching it, because it's so fucking good. Right. <laughs> Maybe that's yeah, why I, uh... I'm not getting video. I hope that the Attack on Titan manga doesn't like totally faceplant itself, cause if it does, I, tell me what's good, in that fucking like, basement first. It's it's <laughs> good, yeah. It's been good, but lately I'm like, where are they going here? I don't know. It's getting crazy, but yeah, I, I need to get caught back up on the manga because I'm roughly probably fifteen, yeah. twenty chapters behind by now. I'm probably a few behind again, but I mean, it's, it's... which is good, cause. Reading a monthly manga as it comes out is awful. Mm. Even yeah. a weekly one is enough to kill me with The Nesting Not Kanojo and Fuka. Both of those, <laughs> every week, I'm just like, I fucking want it. Like, today, I was looking, I was like, Fuka should come out today. Why is it not out? I fucking need this. <laughs> what the fuck? It's just been a week. Just like, refreshing the page yeah. over and like, over. I'm, five, I'm like, going on to, like, manga updates and shit. Like, did something happen? It says seven days since last one. What the fuck? Where is this? Like, God, that reminds down, me. CJ. I think I have a backlog now of weekly Shonen Jump, like, digital issues that I have to get through. Yeah, I just, nice. I didn't realize this, but Fairy Tail was just released yesterday or something like, yeah, two chapters of Fairy Tail were released yesterday. Usually it releases on Monday, so I got delayed today, which is interesting. But, um, yeah. 
That's where good I'm good episode so far. Today. I'll have to watch the fourth episode. And CJ, after I watch the fourth episode, you'll probably get a Skype message of saying, Oh my god! Oh, I guarantee I will, man. <laughs> the fucking cliffhanger of the fourth episode is one of the worst I've ever seen. Like, it's fucking bad. I know. One Piece has a couple really tough oh. cliffhangers. No, I, the, I, the the real show that'll introduce you to the pain of cliffhanger is the monster. Never watched it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's so good, but like I remember, you know, we went we watched it at like our weekly meetings, and so we'd watch like one or two episodes each week, and it was just like awful sometimes. Like we'd be like screaming at the television. <laughs> I was oh, literally man. yelling at my monitor yesterday after this. <laughs> it was that bad. And I usually don't do any of that shit. Well, yeah. you want to know See, I... what series actually probably tops all that? But mm. we we don't know this because we didn't have to watch it as it was coming out weekly. It's Samurai Flamenco. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because that show was I just I did like... watch that as it was coming out. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you I... had to like wait a week. <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah. say this is at least comparable, if not worse, than most of the ones in Samurai Flamingo. It's oh, that man. bad. Woo. Yeah. Woo. yeah. I'm excited. I I don't know how so excited you're going to be when it happens. <laughs> uh, depends on the surprise. Oh, yeah, you guys are going to get a fun time at the ending of the first season of Code Geass. <laughs> exactly. Oh, what? Yeah, I don't I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'm quite fond of this anime called Code Geass. Right? <laughs> <And>, uh... <laughs> And the first season ends in like a big cliffhanger where like I do want to watch the second season. You know how what what's gonna so, happen? So you're saying it's and then, yeah, somewhat, but it's worse. It's way worse, I think. But anyway, but I'll, 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 I don't want to spoil anything about it because I want you guys to be surprised. Yeah. But well, we now know it ends on a cliffhanger. So way to ruin yeah. that surprise. <laughs> God damn it, Dan. Yeah, I know you already. I, I just don't, I just don't want to ruin it more. So <laughs> I'm gonna put end it here. See, now you're not just going to, you didn't just ruin that for me, now you're ruined to me as to, like, as I'm going to be watching the last couple, like, is this the thing that's going to be, like, the the cliffhanger here? Or are they wrapping this up and starting something else? It's like, oh god, right. I don't fucking know. You've <laughs> ruined everything for me, Dad. <laughs> well, you're going to know it. Just don't think about it. When it happens, you're going to be like, oh, fuck. Well, we've got, like, a couple <laughs> weeks before then, and I'll probably forget. I have right. a terrible memory. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, so, I don't really have anything else except... Like high school DxD, domestic Nojo, and Fuka, but neither none of you read domestic Nojo or Fuka. I don't think like y- you don't read any of those, do you, Clarissa? Nope. No. Oh yeah. Okay. So the can't really talk about any of those. Yeah. I've been us. behind on manga stuff lately, and the only stuff I've been watching is like currently is like uh, I'm a little behind, but trying to catch up on Fate, and I've been watching, of course, JoJo's and um, JoJo. My Love Story. I still need to start that one. That one looks really good. You do. It's. it's I think you'll like it. It's really funny. I Let's heard see. good things I, about it. I started watching Eating Off the East. Good uh, series. On my flight back from the United States. Yes. Yeah. But I actually have not finished it because I watched like eight episodes on the flight and then I completely forgot about it. <laughs> but it's. I really enjoyed it so far. I think it's very like different. It's, it feels like yeah. the, the animation style and everything. It's and I very different from your standard like anime because it's very I want to say logical. It's I don't know. I'm trying to find Somewhat. a different word. For it. <laughs> mm. I, I know what you, I, I guess what you mean is like there are no superpowers. Is that what you're talking about? Like kind of. It's there's okay. no superpowers. It's it's very like because they always have to manage their money, right? Because they right. all have this money and they always have to manage it, and then like. The main character always tries to do these certain, like, he tries to help out this group of people, and he tries doing it in very unique and interesting ways in which he can still manage his money and do all this crazy stuff, and, um, I find that interesting. I think it's, I just think it's a very, I don't know, it's different. Like you said, it's just different. Right. Yeah. I love the humor on the first episode regarding the main character's dick. <laughs> like it, they kept joking with it oh, like hold multiple on, times. Hold on. I was completely yes. zoned out. And <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, Dan? <laughs> He's like, wait, dick, what? Uh, what? <laughs> We're talking about eating out the yeast. The way in the first episode, there's like this whole humor that they build up based on the main character's dick because he shows up naked and then in they front start of the looking White for House. him. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> what but, the fuck? He's yeah, like yeah. he has no memory and like he he wakes up and he's like naked outside the White House and he doesn't even know who he is. 
And then the police That's a tries terrible to find way him. to wake up. Yes. Yeah. What the fuck? But they use a picture of his dick to know like if he is the guy or not. <laughs> so they like Oh, they use that as the description of the perp. Yes. <laughs> Have you seen this penis? <laughs> It's so funny. <clears throat> CJ, you really I need, need to, to watch fucking it. watch this yeah. now cuz that yeah. sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah. I uh, I feel like that wasn't a series that really like <laughs> ended fuck? like as well as it built up to. Uh, if that's oh how God, they but... fucking open it, I don't think you can live up to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, fuck. That's a good point. <laughs> <sighs> like yeah, it's it's a little oh, weird shit. how like in the first I don't know like two or three episodes I felt like it was this very funny show and then out of nowhere it starts getting way more serious and dark and I felt like it wasn't it wasn't ever as humorous and and just yeah I guess I I I, I get what you mean because although I haven't finished the series I've been feeling it kind of go down as I go through it like yeah I I feel like I've enjoyed the first episodes way more than I've been enjoying the ones afterwards but. I still think it probably end up being a good series. Yeah, it's... We'll see. I'll try to finish it for next right, week. It's that's... primarily kind of a, like, you know, political, like, technological um, drama and thriller as opposed to, like, a comedy series. Yeah. See, and the, the the first... The thing is that the, the show makes a first impression where it makes you feel like it's going to be comedy mm-hmm. all along, even though there is a plot and everything. And then it feels like... I almost feel like they pretty much drop the comedy, like episode three or four. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. And it just becomes like very serious and way more about the drama of the characters and everything. So. Just just so you know, that's now on my anime list as planned to watch at high priority. <laughs> <laughs> just because he heard the word dick. Well, no, just that whole fucking like opening sequence sounds hilarious. And right. Yeah. <laughs> like even if it's completely different than that, as long if if it grabs me enough with like the first few episodes, if they're just fucking amazing like that, I'll probably end up watching the rest of it anyway. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad I watched. Like, I know some of my friends feel like because it didn't really pan out with like a good ending, they kind of feel like it was not worth watching. I still enjoyed, you know, most right. of it. So I guess it just depends on what your stat, what your thoughts are on like whether the ending, you know, invalidates. <laughs> What came before, right. if it's not good. Let, let me ask you something. Have you watched uh, the show called Guilty Crown? No, I haven't. I mean, I heard of, about it when it was airing, but I haven't actually watched okay. it. Did okay. Did your friends watch the movies at all? The two Eden of the East movies that came yeah. out? Okay. Because the, the right. series doesn't really itself conclude it, anything. Yeah. 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 All right. I was just making sure that that's what they did. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's pretty much it for me. All right. Anybody else got any uh anything else they've been watching and reading this week? One Piece. Nope. Fairy Tale. As, as usual. <laughs> well, I got to keep up with my One Piece. I finally figured out what Gear 4 was and it was amazing, kind of. It was very awkward. It was amazing, kind of. <laughs> well, it's so it's Luffy, right? Luffy's a very quirky guy. So he made this thing that looks absolutely hilarious, but beats the shit out of everything. Yeah. So you're like, I like this, but you look kind of weird. Right. So is it, okay. is it like Jigglypuff and Smash Brothers or something? Or it's adorable <laughs> when it kicks yeah. ass? <laughs> you would be surprised, but yes. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. What? I, was so, so... I, I don't think Luffy can ever be entirely not goofy. You That's know, yeah. Like it's he's... it's part of his character. Yeah. So good point. Just because you mentioned Smash Brothers, I just want to bring up uh, the anime we watched today. Shinibio was that it? Yeah. No, sorry. Yeah. Uh, they actually had a Smash Brothers reference somewhere in there. Really? Where they said something? Yes, I swear. Like there's this one line where the dude was like. Oh, I feel like I'm at 300% of Smash Brothers or something. So either the guy who made the subtitles I read was messing with me, mm. or they had a Smash Brothers reference in there. But I don't uh, remember. I'm, I'm gonna look hand, for that. But yeah, I'm gonna look for that to prove my point. Nice. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's it cool. for my little thing there. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's all we have for um other stuff we've been watching or reading this week. Let's go ahead and move on to our random topic of the day, which was provided by uh, Clarissa here this week. Um, I think I started to go into this earlier when we were talking about Chunyu a little bit, but it's, uh, what, what are some of the, like, aspects that are most important to you in anime and manga? Like, um, earlier whenever I was talking about Chunyu, um, some of the stuff I, I mentioned a little bit was how, how different the characters were and how diverse they were and how, how different the story was just because of, like, the addition of the Chunyu part of it and everything. 
like having super unique characters and um just story and everything is one of the things that I absolutely like love the most. And another thing that I always look for is, I mean, it's most of them are the same. Pr- pretty much, it's damn near like a fucking soap opera, but like the really good dramatic romances and everything. When I read manga, like fucking love that shit. <laughs> Let me see if I if I try to think of something like that. Like at first, I thought, well, I really like good art, but then there are shows that I don't think have good art that I have enjoyed, like Ping Pong the Animation, where it is artsy, it's just not the kind of art that I normally enjoy, and I still really enjoy the show. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely not it. Then maybe a plot, but I really enjoy a show called Yuri Yuri, Dan, which doesn't really have much of a plot anyway. And I, I think for you, probably the most important thing is just boobs. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Uh, but... Not really, guys. It's just like making fun of me, okay? But oh, if I so, see... have you tried Queen's Blade? <laughs> I have oh, never God. seen it. Fucking Jesus, oh, that show! God, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna take a note of my. F- <laughs> that <laughs> fucking show. I've right avoided now. that show like the plague. I I found it randomly on Netflix one day, and I I've never been the same since then. <laughs> it, it's. I mean, it's definitely not my thing, but it is a show no. that primarily exists to sell mostly naked or entirely naked PVC figures of girls. Yeah. And uh, it's upfront about it. I mean, it doesn't try and pretend to be anything else. So. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you at least know That's what cool. you're in for and whether to avoid yeah. it or dive right in. <laughs> this just reminded me of something completely off topic, but start a pseudo random anyway. But uh, Kojima was on- asked why he made a character a certain way on a Metal Gear Solid game. Because mm-hmm. he had like this girl that pretty much used almost no clothes and he actually responded that the only reason why he made the character that way was because he really wanted to see cosplayers do that (laughs) so like he's legitimately like i'm the designer of the game i made the character because i'm horny to see cosplayers doing that (laughs) i mean (laughs) pretty much dude you eat if if you got the power and you want to make that happen whatever man yeah (laughs) fucking go for it oh kojima uh, yeah, but answering my thing, though, of going back a little bit, I, I just want to say that I think it's closure, actually, for me, because, like, the one thing that annoys me the most is watch a show that doesn't really, like, close any of the topics that he has open or any of the plot points that he has tried to develop, like... If, if a character starts being developed, I want to see where he's going. Mm-hmm. And if if there's a plot point that they bring up, I want to see, you know, I want to see what is on the basement. Yeah. Off, <laughs> yeah. Off, <laughs> you know, and I want to see who owns the actual key, the correct key in Nisekoi, which I'm not even sure if I'm going to keep watching that because fuck. Dude, I, I read it like fucking like right, right when the. Right when the anime was, like, about to start coming out, I had read all the manga up to that point, and I just, I got to the end of that, I was like, there, there's nothing still, it's the same show, fuck this shit, I'm done. <laughs> right. And like, and then, and then something like Monogatari, at least you get the closure from each arc, which is great, but I'm still waiting to see, like, whatever is the backstory of the <laughs> the vampire guy, or uh, Araragi, because they oh, keep, like, talking so about it and mentioning it for years, and, like, we never, it, it, okay. like, they haven't... At least it's this. That's already been written. I've already read it. Like, that's, that's a thing. That is done. You just have to, like, go find it if right, you want right. it that bad. But it is being made into a movie at some point, and it yeah. is very good. So, like, that, I'm the closure from that, that, incredibly good. Holy shit. Yeah. Spice and Wolf makes me mad, yes. though. Which I think that's probably never going to happen. I wish they got a third that season one... for that. Or yeah, I wish that... I wish they would just reboot the series, and then it got all of all like because the series is technically done. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it is. I think. And but yeah, I I know there are like ten novels written, and I think there's no more. Yeah, in the, in the ten work, so. ten is usually what series get. I mean, that's what Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer is. Um, so I would love to see that series get rebooted and get like from beginning to end what it deserved. Yeah, Dan. Did they finish the novel series for Spice and Wolf? No, I did not. I I probably should though. No, I mean I wasn't sure if he if the author ended it or if it was still going. Um, I'm pretty sure he did. Okay. Um, as I said, I'm not sure. I just know that there there are like a bunch of them written that they haven't adapted. There's enough for at least another season by now. Yeah. There's definitely more than that. They're like enough for I think three more seasons or something. I think at least they they were coming out with the novels in English though. So. Hmm. Oh, that's something. Maybe that means they haven't forgotten about it at least. Yeah. But um, Dan, I think you really hit the nail on the head there. It's something I I forgot to really say a minute ago is like closure is probably thinking about one of the most important things for me too because that's yeah that's why I typically don't watch a whole lot of uh, harem stuff anymore because it usually just had the harem ending and they never went back and they never did anything else like. 
Exactly. That's, that's the thing. That's the reason why, even though technically there's a lot of better harems out there, Shuffle is still one of my like top five anime, way above pretty much any of the other like harems besides Bakumon and Guitar. But that's kind of it. It's eh, it's kind of half harem, half not, whatever. whatever. Yeah. But um. That's the reason Shuffle's still so high in my top anime list, because there's fucking closure. Somebody wins, and, like, there's a defined ending. Like, it's so good. Right. Um, yeah, that that's it for me for the most part. And that being said, it's not like it's not like I need everything to be answered. I just need the things I care about mm-hmm. to be answered. And sometimes the things that I care about are the same that the authors care about to answer. And sometimes they're they're different. And when they're different, that's usually when I get disappointed with an ending. That being said, I can still be somewhat disappointed with the ending of a show and say that I've enjoyed the journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it just doesn't happen that often. So. Yeah. Right. Like, for me, like, one of them that went too far and made it worse that they tried to give it closure but fucked everything up was actually Aremo with the uh, <laughs> the OVAs for season two. They should yep. not have done that. They should have just stopped. That just ruined the <laughs> entire fucking anime for me and uh, makes me so mad still. That's a good point. Yeah. It just ruins everything. Like, Yeah, I think I'm so used to, like, there being stuff in shows that at some point I think is, like, dumb or crappy that... You know, it sucks if the ending isn't good. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm willing to still say, like, okay, I enjoyed the stuff that came before, and that's what fan fiction is for, right? To, like, fix all the dumb <laughs> shit that the actual author did. <laughs> oh god, I don't want to go into fan fiction or Remo. They probably just keep going with what the the author wrote in there. Well, probably. And... Oh god, no, fuck that. Well, I mean, you gotta realize that that was the, you know, intention, I mean. But, come on, man. <laughs> They did enough just implying all that shit. Oh, yeah. Like, he should have just stayed with Kuroneko, and everything would have been fucking great. Fucking loved her. I gotta figure her at fucking Megacon. Like, she's fucking awesome. Yeah, I like Kuroneko. Oh, but... actually, hold on. Since since I mentioned it, I'm gonna grab that real fast. Show you. <laughs> since we've got the... Yeah, because all the listeners would definitely be able to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not... We're not actually recording video yet but i do have an amazing kuroneko figurine for clarissa to see here yeah the reason i like it so much is one of the ones here that actually isn't her normal outfit it's the one where she's just wearing like the the very light white shirt and everything and like the mini skirt Mm -hmm. but she still has the cat ears so it's fucking great love it nice (laughs) yeah right something else for me besides closure that i just thought about i do like to see the main characters get some development and it, like I want I want you to see them start at one point and end at a different yeah. point is what I mean cuz well I mean the the character I, don't, I think that's just good of, writing yeah <laughs> I mean the, the character development yeah. thinking is kind of what leads to the closure usually like it's kind of it's yeah, it's pretty sure. much necessary as part of it typically cuz I'm actually not a big fan of characters that already start like up here like Kirito from Sword Art Online I actually think is it's kind of one of the least interesting characters of that show just because like since the beginning he's the strongest mm. and at all points they keep like coming up with ways he can keep being the strongest you know i was excited to see when he went to a different game or whatever because like oh okay now he's not gonna be the the guy who better tested the game or whatever he's not gonna be the the best player from the get-go but he kind of did because he went there with the same stats that he had before yeah. so i thought that was kind of cheesy um I, I'm yeah, it's normally not a big fan. It's of that. really tricky to write a series where like the main character is already like really good. Like I know, um, y- usually they either have to grow in some kind of other way, or right, like you have to have some kind of like crazy stuff going on. Like, um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever watched a Red Akagi, but um, Akagi is like a, a mahjong uh, series um, by Fukumoto. And, like, Akagi is like that. Like, he's already, like, really super good. He's, like, a genius uh, level Mahjong player. Um, And so, you know, I admit that, like, I like, you know, his other series, Kaiji, better because Kaiji's, like, more of a fuck-up and has more, like, stuff that he has to, like, go through. Um, Right. But I think, like, there's enough, like, tension and, like, crazy stuff, like, in Akagi that it works, but it's really tricky. Like, I know the other one that I can think of is, like, uh, you know, I know in Prince of Tennis, they kind of did it where, you know, he starts off, like, already really good at tennis, but for that, then it's more of, like, an, uh, an emotional growth, like, you know, learning the value of teamwork right. and things like that, but... Yeah, that's... Yeah, I guess growth doesn't necessarily need to be power growth. It can be, like, all kinds mm-hmm. of stuff. It can be, like, relationship growth in, a, in, a, in, like, a romantic or even a harem series or something like that, and... 
when I don't see that or it takes too long to see some of that, I usually get frustrated with the show. Yeah. So there are a lot of harem shows where every episode is pretty much the same and it never really goes anywhere. So that's really frustrating to me. Mm-hmm. Um, or if it keeps like being held back. Uh, right. Yeah. So if the character like keeps trying to move on, but never he can never do it. And like there, there, there's a certain like point where they can pull it off where he fails enough. But eventually those failures were enough to make him grow as a person and be able to achieve his, yeah. his success and everything. But when it's just always the same, either if it's the same up here or if it's the same down here, I'm I'm not usually not a big fan of those. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I think sometimes like harem series and visual novel like adaptations, you know, they're too hesitant to to choose a character, that and so yeah, me they off just every yeah. time they just don't kind of go anywhere because. Um, yeah. I guess it's that there's always, like, fans of every different character, so, you know, they don't yeah. want to, I guess, disappoint, like, that they, segment of the fandom, like, those the rest of the segments of the fandom. And they end up disappointing everyone yeah. by doing that. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's, that's yeah. like, the best thing about Shuffle, though, is my favorite girl won, so it's like, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Fuck everybody else. She won. <laughs> Fuck yeah. There you go. <laughs> so happy. I'm, a bunch of other people were pissed off, and I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, uh, yeah, that's, it, it's a tricky thing, too, with romance series in general, because a lot of them, if they're not well done, just come up with stupid ways to keep things from happening. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, yeah. Um, do you watch Game of Thrones at all? Yeah. I haven't watched, um, the current series yet, this okay. season yet, but, uh... uh where, how far are you, CJ? I am now to... I've watched episode one of season three. Okay. I was just, I was just gonna mention something that keeps, like, happening in Game of Thrones, where, like, two characters are almost on the same place, so, like, you imagine that they should meet, but they don't for some stupid reason. Mm. Like, for, like, that one split second that something happened, oh, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like... Yeah, that's like a good example just to, to show like, because that stuff happens on anime at all. And I, I gave like a out, completely out of topic as an example. But when whenever like, I don't know, someone is going to come fast and then the train just happens to like go by at the same time. And you can't hear oh, anything. Sure. Or, yeah. Yeah. Just those usual tropes are annoying yeah. as hell to me. But <laughs> Well, like yeah. I know CJ, you and I were talking one time about the this entire situation would be resolved if people just talk to each other. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like a fucking yeah. entire <laughs> anime, entire series. Like I'm talking like 40 episodes or like like yeah. fucking 20 or so like volumes of manga. If somebody just went up and be like, "Hey, I like you. I think we should go out." Right. And if she would just be like, "Yeah, I like you too." Fucking the whole series is done. They're fucking together. They didn't even get that far in the series. They were kind of, like, almost dating, and now they are already. What <laughs> right. the fuck? Or, like, somebody, you know, hears something and, like, misinterprets it. Oh, and yeah, then, all that like, bullshit. they're mad. And it's oh, like, yeah. you know, like, you know, people have misunderstanding, and sometimes people are hesitant to talk, or, yeah. you know, that's fine for a little while, but sometimes they just drag it out too much. Yeah, yeah. If, if things blow up and they start, like, attacking other people, whether it be physically or verbally, because of a misunderstanding where they never even fucking asked the person, right. hey, did you actually say this? They didn't. All this fighting and everything's for fucking nothing. It's like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, you, you gotta have the drama in there somehow, man. Yep. So, anyway, um, looks like we're we're almost at our, our time limit here, so I wanted to see if there's any, any other quick little additions we wanted to make here on this, because um, I don't think you've actually started off at, um, any of the discussions on this yet, Clarissa. Um, I think, you know, <laughs> while I'm not the biggest fan of uh, Kazuo Cook, his uh, actual output all the time, that's more, you know, my co-host over at, on Anime World Order, um, I do agree with him in his philosophy that, you know, characters are sort of the most important thing. Um, I mean, plot is good. I like, you know, an intricate plot, especially, you know, I like mysteries and thrillers and stuff like that and so uh, you know really well done intricate plot is awesome um but at the end of the day like i can watch and have watched shows where not a lot of stuff happens if i like the characters and the way they interact with one another yeah that's that's pretty much like the whole reason like i fucking can't stand them but uh that's like the whole reason people love like lucky star and yuri yuri and shit like that because they Mm. just love the characters i believe yeah because there, there's no plot there. There's no, like, real any substance there. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, I just want to mention as well, to that point, is, like, you you can a lot of times finish a show 
or or a game or whatever it applies to everything and then years will pass and somebody will ask you about the plot and you may not like remember everything in detail like you won't know everything but if i ask you like how is lelouch then you have that like personality and that look mm -hmm. in your head so i feel like characters is, is stuck into people's minds for way longer oh, yeah. and, and in a much more uh, deeper way than than the plot usually does yeah, yeah. That, that's one way i'll always be about joseph <laughs> yeah, forever. I, was, I, was gonna I bring will that always up. love Joseph. I was gonna bring that up. Like I, I've already forgotten half the plot of that arc, but I still remember everything <laughs> Joseph does. And it's fucking great. Because Joseph is the best. Oh, so good. I know. I was trying to find like clips for my JoJo's panel, and I was like, I just want to do all of these clips of Joseph being ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Um. You got, you got anything? Um. Any little final stuff to add here, Clucker? Nope. Oh, oh. I would probably right. also. I uh, well, hang on. I never mind. I do have one thing to add. <laughs> um, I would mainly agree with most everything that's been said. Um, but I still think plot has plot. Plot can make a story become a masterpiece. Mm. Yeah. Um, the characters are definitely what make it memorable, and, and solid characters will definitely be there and will always always have a certain part and is very makes a series memorable the characters make the series memorable but what can make a series almost a masterpiece is a combination of both really good and well-designed characters and an awesome plot yeah and and good um, closure and good so closure. all the things we were talking about pretty yeah. much like i said <laughs> it's just a sum of everything we were talking about but yeah. There is a balance, like in everything. There is a balance that can be ha that needs to be had, and right. when people find that balance, we get these amazing series. Mm -hmm. Awesome, like Old Gears. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll see about Kill that. Kill a Kill then. or anything that has really good plot and also character development. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I think there's always you know a balance because I mean even though. Like, so I really like, you know, I talked about Akagi and Kaiji. Like, I really like that guy's um, series, Fukumoto. And, like, he can't really draw very well. So, like, that's one of the things that a lot of people have as a barrier to entry with those shows. It's like, they're like, it's so ugly. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and it's kind of true. Like, everybody has, like, these huge pointy noses and it's, like, weird looking. But, um, at the same time, like, you know, stuff like anime and manga, it is a visual medium. So there's, like, a limit, you know? Like, stuff can be... Yeah. It doesn't always have to be, like, the super nicest, like, shiniest, beautiful-looking thing, but... Like, Shaft stuff or something like that. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> or, like, KyoAni, but it's, you know, still there's gotta be, like, something visually. Even yeah. if it's, like, you know, the weird... Those weird Fukumoto character designs that sort of grow grow on you, and then now you are now you somehow love the giant pointy noses. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> awesome, um... Anyway, I think that's pretty much all we have time for here. Um, we we kind of actually went over a little bit, so have fun with this, Dan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, okay, so uh, what we're going to be talking about next week, uh, we should have Roberto back is as um, in his usual slot with the other two guys here. And uh, we're going to be talking about Elfin Lead, as well as uh, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer Volume 4, and yeah. all the other stuff, so... Yeah, um, I want to say thanks a lot, uh, Clarissa, for actually coming on here and actually uh, contributing because this is this is probably one of the best episodes we'd had because you're you're I mean obviously you're used to doing podcasts you're 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 pretty good at this but um yeah tell everybody um again a little bit about yourself if you want or where they can find you at like Twitter and all that other random stuff so sure yeah um I was glad to be on it was fun um thanks very much for inviting me uh so if you guys want to listen to me ramble on about any other stuff um my regular podcast is the anime world order podcast uh www.animeworldorder.com and uh we don't put out shows quite as often as we used to because we've been doing it for entirely too long um <laughs> lately we've talked about the uh last couple of episodes we do we've talked about the um the third edition of the anime encyclopedia by our friend helen mccarthy and uh, jonathan clements and uh, we also talked about uh, high school seha girls with our friend uh, heidi kemps um who does some game journalism stuff so yeah go ahead and check that out we have a whole review index so you can look for stuff by title if you want to look for particular reviews and uh we'll also post um any other things that we guest 
host on on there so any other podcasts and uh we'll we'll mention this one too and uh yeah. you can uh, also find me at uh, clarissa g on twitter if you would like we also do have an at anime world order twitter uh which is mostly just used to post notifications when like the new episodes go up all right awesome um yeah go ahead and tell them where they can find um you at a uh, clicker all right you can find me at uh on twitter at o clicker <laughs> O H K L E K E R, or you can find me just on the internet as Boclex, B O W K L E K S. All right, and Dan, go ahead and tell them where they can find you and the podcast, because I still don't remember where the fuck we put all the podcast stuff. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Uh, well, you can find me at my house. I live in Brazil. Um, Nobody wants to go there. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's that's, other, that's um... not true. I would like to go there someday. <laughs> I know, it's a joke. Calm okay. down, Clayton. <laughs> If no, if you just want to like read some random thoughts about the things that I talk about, just follow me at Limo Daniel M on Twitter. Also, the podcast can be found on Twitter as well at pseudo underscore pod, or you can find our blog at pseudo random podcast dot wordpress dot com, or search pseudo random on YouTube. You're probably not going to find us yet, but we'll see, or maybe you will. And we are also on iTunes, so if you look for a pseudo random podcast in there, all of our episodes post on iTunes. Every week on Mondays, usually. Though we've been we we've uh, we've been late with one of them because of me, <laughs> but uh, it it seems like it's on track now, and I think that's about it. All right. Um. And yeah, you can find me pretty much on on Twitter or wherever the hell else. Even though I post on Twitter like once a month, I don't know. But um. Yeah. Pretty much anywhere. If you see Boom Coffee, that's me. Um. Twitter, my anime list, all that. So um. Yeah, um, thanks everybody for listening in, and uh, tune in next week, we're going to be talking about um, one of the classics, Elfin Lead, along with, um, yeah, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer Volume 4. Alright, thanks, bye. Alright, see ya! Thank you.